Well met friends, my name is Adam and this is Get Tobacco, where we love to smoke. And today's leafing is all about... Wait a minute. Well met friends, my name is Adam and this is Get Piped, where we love to pipe. And today's piping is all about the luxury leaf baby. Ah, yes, yes, much better. But no, right, I'm, I'm a pipe guy and, and I'm Get Piped and this is Get Piped and it's, uh, you're a part of the Get Piped Pipe community. So it is fitting, of course, that we're always talking about pipes because pipes are awesome. But what about the other component that makes piping piping? The component that allows a pipe to pipe. Yeah, pipe tobacco. Something I've honestly seldom presented on over here, but that's not for a lack of desire. See, I've always thought of pipe smoking as like a two-part hobby. There's the, there's the hobby side of smoking tobacco pipes, of course, yeah. And then there's also the hobby of collecting pipes. Surprisingly, they're not always paired and generally they are, but you'd be surprised of the amount of folks out there who have mega pipe collections twice, thrice, thrice, five rice, that of my own, but never actually smoke those pipes. Now you may be hearing, of course, duh, there's, there's of course people out there who collect pipes and they have these very high valued collections of say Dunhills, Astley, Sheratons, Eversons, Formers, S-Bangs, Florovs, Rasmussens, uh, Antique Petersons, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they don't actually smoke those pipes. They want to keep them pristine or they, they very rarely smoke them, but that's not what I'm getting at. There's actually a realm of folks who genuinely do not smoke their pipes. They don't smoke cigars. They don't smoke cigarettes. They're just not tobacco people. That's a very small portion for sure, but they're out there. So yes, to be a pipe guy might actually mean one of two things. But my friends, in my case, it does not. It does in fact mean two things. I am a collector of pipes from inexpensive to expensive, cheap and gnarly to pricey and adorned and also a smoker of tobacco. And that's exactly what this episode will focus on. I feel I've neglected to talk about tobacco for a while now, and, and plus my, my factory pipe collection episode did great, uh, which, which had lots of positive feedback, and, and I was honestly a little bit timid, and in, in turn very surprised when so many of you were, were happy and excited to provide feedback and talk about how you enjoyed me talking about things I like. So with that, I might go ahead and do it a little bit more, starting with this particular episode of my favorite pipe tobaccos. Strap in, this will be a long one. Grab a deep chambered pipe and, and light her up while you either watch or listen. This is an entertainment, a, a production, not a get to the point kind of thing. You, you know that if you're subscribed to my channel by now. However, before my pipe in pipe only people leave, hang on tight. I got something for you. Well, one of you just bear with me it's a giveaway don't bear with me i'm giving away a pipe which i'll explain now uh, i'll get i'll get into it right now there we go huge thank you to my good friend mitchell from mbsd pipes mbsd pipes is a mega small pipe distributor mega small in the sense where there's only two employees for the most part him and his wife i love it and i mean i love it this is like the modern day brick and mortar you remember like five to six years ago well really five to 15 years ago, but five to six for me when brick and mortar pipe shops were really, really struggling. And there was this huge online movement to support them, which was super hard because of taxes and land and rents and, and all that, causing prices to be pretty inflated compared to, of course, the online counterparts. I remember I would be spending 30 to 40 more dollars on a Peterson pipe back in my local in uh, Georgia, where I could get the same variation pipe from smokingpipes.com well 30 to 40 dollars cheaper part of that was to support the little guy and other parts of that was to go to see it and hold it and, and get instant gratification but the support of business was what supporting piping was it was it was always a win supporting piping was a win well that's still my take on small business pipe and tobacco related companies just like i love the idea of supporting the now defunct pipe crate 
F in the chat for them. But, but yeah, while, while I love the big sites and I will absolutely continue to shop there, MBSD has something special about it. They have introduced me to international artists and pipe makers like Benny Joe of Indonesia. Check my video called uh, the, the Case for Artisan Pipes for a little bit on him. And also they've enlightened me on the rich history of Astley's of, of London, or at least allowed me to enrich myself. Uh, I made a video on it with their help. Go check that one out as well. But the small business aspect is what we need to support, especially when they have competitive prices to the giants. I'll also add that Mitchell is a magician at sourcing estate pipes. Call him a Mitchgician, a Mitchgician who grew up in Michigan, Michigan. I don't think he grew up in Michigan. Mitchell hooked me up with not one, but two amazing Meerschaum pipes. One of which I'm extremely happy to now smoke my favorite pipe tobaccos in throughout the duration of this episode. And then a second Meerschaum pipe that I get to do whatever I want and I want to do a giveaway. Now these were both gifts from Mitchell to me. So I am excited to actually pay it forward here by passing one of them on to you guys. Mitchell wasn't like, hey, gas me up on your episode. I'll pay you 20 bucks and send you an old pipe. It was more like, hi, I'm Mitchell from MBSD. Wow, pipe shows are really cool and stressful. I like your content. Thank you for making quality stuff. Here's two pipes. Do what you want with them. Thank you. So that was really cool. And it could be really cool for you. So if you want to win this beauty of a mirror, all you got to do is like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, which you already should be. Come on. And no, not leave a comment, bonus points if you do, but actually the last step is to go to either Spotify or Apple. Type in the Get Piped podcast and give it a five-star rating and a written review. Aha, I got you. Yes, you could skip through 10 minutes of it and make something up in, in your review and I'd be none the wiser, but the good-hearted Samaritan would at least give it a chance. Once you leave your review and your five-star rating to either Apple or Spotify, Send a screenshot to Cho at getpiped.co. No M, I could not afford the uh, the .com domain. It was like $15,000. So .co, no M, and I will consider you entered. The Get Pipe Podcast is the spot for your weekly philosophical, fantastical, and sometimes emotional and hashtag deep pipe smoking content. It's a really great time and no one regrets it except lamos. Are you a lamo? Get Wifed always calls me a lame when when I don't want to go for a walk. So don't be a get piped who doesn't want to go for a walk. Don't be don't be a lame here. Okay, back to it. You can see why I have a podcast. I talk forever. These MBSD pipes are special. Who doesn't love a Meerschaum? Honestly, me. I actually never really loved mirrors. I've always kind of liked them, but never really loved them for one very specific reason. I hate this plastic twisty thingy. This little plastic insert is, is has always been such a turnoff to me. It just makes me feel like it's a gimmicky toy when I would rather just have a stem that inserts into the shank. Now I realize that's a me problem and this is just an unrealistic complaint, but fortunately for me, unrealistic or not, I don't ever have to deal with it again because I love these MBSD Meerschaum pipes. Gents, ladies, look at this. The perfect Meerschaum pipe. Both of these MBSD mirrors have a real tenon shank insert system. For the giveaway pipe, the shank has the twisty guy already in the shank with the receiving end piece for an actual tenon that twists in like a regular briar pipe. My pipe is very similar, but takes it just a step further with a briar shank cap, allowing for the ultimate mirror to exist. As I twist my regular acrylic pipe stem into the briar shank cap, it's marvelous. I am so infatuated with this piece. This, this briar cap too adds an incredible beauty to the piece. I'm sorry, I just couldn't give this one away. I, I love it too much. But this Meerschaum for the giveaway is, is sweet too. It still follows the methodology of traditional briar pipe making, but in a mirror. And the mirror itself is ultra clean and pristine with the tiniest of accents that make the pipe pop. 
I always felt that mirrors can get way too adorned, and this is a great example of less is more. Anyway, we gotta get into this video so I can go ahead and smoke this charmer for the B-roll. Remember to enter, just subscribe to my YouTube channel, give this video a like, and then head over to Apple or Spotify, leave it a five-star rating and a review, shoot that over, shoot a little screenshot over to my email, show at gethype.co. Now here's the kicker you got until the end of February, 2024. Giveaway ends on the 29th of February, leap year, that's fun. Uh, which is also the day I'll be announcing the winner exclusively on my podcast. Don't worry, I'll announce it at the top of the show for all the lamos out there who don't want to listen to the whole damn thing. But, but Thursday, February 29th at 4 a.m. Eastern Time, tune into the show, and I will tell you who is winning this beautiful Meerschaum pipe. However, if that's too much for you, I have the hookup all the same. Head on over to mbsdpipes.com and browse his selection of new pipes, estate pipes, accessories and more and if you find something that you have to have input the discount code get pipe for 10 percent off your order for the next two weeks if you're still a little bit slow to watch my videos you don't have that notification on it's okay after a two-week period that code will not expire but will move down to a five percent off for the next 12 months which is pretty insane pretty insanely awesome i don't even know what i'll be doing in seven months from now Getting 5% off MBSD pipes, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but it is time to talk today's topic, so let us get on to the video. Pipe tobacco. My favorites. Man, there are so many blends out there. It's, it's honestly pretty dang daunting. Especially when you account for all the smaller blenders out there. Like the, the folks at home making it happen and selling tobacco from their dang house. Guys like Jim from Emerson Southern Forge come to mind. But then, of course, we have the local shops that make national and, and sometimes international moves with their blends, like LJ Peretti, Watch City, Cigar, uh, Country Squire, Boswell's, and many, many more. Then you have the Giants, Sutliff, Lane, Cornell and Deal, GL Peace, etc., etc. Now, I have had many, many blends in my days as a pipe smoker. Now, I know I look young, and I guess I am young, which is still pretty sweet, I guess, uh, for now, anyway, but, but I have filled thousands, countless, honestly, countless chambers of pipes in my life. I really smoke a pipe almost every single day, and the days I do, it's probably two to three pipes. Typically different blends each day. Over the past couple years, though, I have been trying new and new tobacco. New to me, yes, but also new to you, to the community. I like to snag those small batches and give them a shot, but as of late, I found myself kind of in zen mode with some of those blends that have been really consistent to me. So after those countless bowls, I'm actually really excited to talk about my favorite pipe tobaccos, 2024 edition, as this could change as my palate develops and, and changes over the years, which it probably will. Let's start with the overarching categories. We'll start with Virginia Periques, aka Vapors. I don't love them. Very few tickle my fancy. What a horrible phrase that is. <laughs> But I am known in the community as the, the non perique guy, to be honest. I used to hate it. Not anymore, it's just not something I'm really big on. If it's a light addition to a blend, it can be amazing, but anything of a, a medium to heavy amount of perique, and, and, and I'm out. Despite my current days of preferring not perique, there are a couple perique blends that, that make it into this list. Those are GL Peace Windjammer and GL Peace Penny Farther. Let me tell you about it. Both are such unique blends that, that masterfully add Perique to the mixtures. Windjammer actually has a decent share of the stuff, but as an addition to the delicious Burley, Toasted Black Cavendish, and Dark Rum. And this blend is just great. Uh, the Perique is, a, is noticeable, but it doesn't really bother me. In my case, the rums and the Burley are what make this blend taste so fantastic. Now, Penny Farthing, on the other hand, I don't know, it's just fun. Uh, this, this blend is a shag cut and shags are super underrated and, and I adore the addition of this Virginia Perique to his old London collection line of tobacco. I think it's the dark fired and the shag that makes me love this blend so much, but it's fun. It has a clever and fun name and it comes in a pretty purple can. One of my favorite tin arts for sure. Fun, fun is always just a win for me, but this one does taste fantastic. Now outside of those, eh, 
I'm sure there are more out there, more Virginia Periques that I that I do enjoy, but none are really coming to mind right now. At the very least, I'm not smoking. I'm not, they're not in my daily rotation or even weekly or monthly rotation of pipes. So we'll wrap that category up and move over to English. Man, what a tobacco. It, it's dark, it's mysterious, it's smoky, it's toasty, it's warming and hearty. This is the campfire blend. People like to say barbecue sometimes, but I, I think more of like a, a chilly morning in the woods, maybe going on a lunch, walking through the city, talking Boston, Dublin, Chicago, London. Never been to London, but naturally that, that fits, right? Now, I do really love English mixtures, ones that contain that iconic component, Latakia. Being one of the most common lines of blending, English, of course, has several staples that make up my go-to blend. Originally, Ashton Artisan Blend, the non-Syrian version, was one of my favorites. It's not that it isn't now, it's just that I haven't had it in quite some time. I don't even have a tin to show you as B-roll. I, I used to smoke them and smoke them all, and I just never really replaced them. But blends that I can't get enough of in, in the English department go to one of my favorite tobacco blenders out there, LJ Peretti of Boston. Tashkent is by far one of the most magical English mixtures out there. Named after the beautiful city in Uzbekistan, this blend contains Latakia, of course, and other delicious varietals like Izmir and, and some Turkish. This is a sultry, spicy, and creaming blend that is quite fascinating, and it's, it's probably on my top list of Englishes. Now, contradicting to what I just said, another magnificent mixture, one that I found to actually rival that of Tashkent, is another Peretti English called Oriental Number 40. It's very similar, but man, it's fantastic. It's been giving me, it's been giving Tashkent a run for its money. Now, I just got a two ounce bag, I've been very much enjoying it. I, I think I might have to step up and get a, a, a half pound can, one of those iconic yellow cans from LJ Peretti of the Oriental number 40. And speaking of the famous yellow cans, we got another one from Peretti and that one's Pride of Loch Lomond. Pride of Loch Lomond is such an amazing English blend as well. Honestly, all three are just so fantastic. This one is earthy. It's, it's English, of course, it's blended in the old Scottish tobacco blending tradition, and I just enjoy it so, so much. Now, my final two English mixtures that have been quite special to me go to blender GL Peace. They actually call him the Dark Lord in some corners of the world for his undeniable skill and mastered craft of blending Latakia. If you ever get the chance to smoke a Peace blend with Syrian, it's, it's truly something special, but, but I'd argue even more so than that of any Frank Morton out there. I said what I said, and I'll say it again. Mr. Peace has dozens of, of Latakia mixtures out there, but current production tins that come to mind in the realm of, of favorites include this mixture from his classic collection line, Abingdon. Rich, robust, powerful, smooth, and somehow subtle. In my view, it exemplifies his mastery as a tobacconist. This is a blend that I smoke when I want to feel contemplative and, and, and even thoughtful. There's a mysteriousness here that, that I love and long for. In truth, I believe that this is the blend that replaced my appreciation for Ashton's Artisan Blend. It's that, but a lot better. This next one from GL Peace is made by GL Peace and is a GL Peace blend, but also not at all a GL Peace blend. How does that work? It's actually a very recent introduction into pipe tobacco, releasing only late 2023. The blending name is one of heavy importance in the pipe and tobacco lore, and that's Drocker and Sons. I would love to do a history episode of the name one day, so I'll keep my comments short, but in essence, the historic blending name has been relaunched with Mr. Peace as the blender, reworking old blends into modern day releases. King's Fool is not necessarily a favorite of mine when it comes to my all-time favorite blends, but there's something here, there's something about it that just has to have me tell you about it. It's just so good. <laughs> it has that deep campfire tin note in it, and it burns very cool and rich, yet it's actually on the lighter side of English blends with a conservative amount of, of Latakia, and it pairs so well with the Red Virginia, the Burley, and yes, even a little bit of Perique. This blend has become one of my go-tos over the past few weeks, uh, I don't know if it's on the list of, of best of all times for me. Maybe it is since it's in this video and I'm telling you about it, but I, I had to tell you, it's super good. But moving on to aromatic. Aromatic people, where are you at? Glad you stuck around. If you hate aromatics though, fine. 
I don't. In fact, I find it extremely impressive when a blender is able to make a successful and, and delicious aromatic pipe tobacco, especially after paving your way through a genre that is littered with goopy gunk and instead making a, a quality tasting aromatic that has the, the bindings of delicious natural tobacco flavor paired with that of some wholesome and delectable sweetness. Well, that's a marvel. That is great. So starting us off, I do feel like Colt Blood Red Moon has to be mentioned. It's on everybody's list, but I'll be honest, I, I don't smoke it super often. I, I still have to mention it because it is quite tasty. I actually don't even have a tin of it anymore to show you. So maybe I'll pick up one after this, but it is hands down the best cherry aromatic on the market. But speaking of master blenders, especially folks who make aromatic taste incredible, I have to turn to my friends over at the Country Squire down in Jackson, Mississippi formerly known as Old Toby and Rivendell, blends Tom Bigby and Riverboat Queen, respectively, are absolutely outstanding tobaccos. Talking about that W-O-W, -W, I'll also be releasing a video in the coming months about how the Country Squire shifted from the Lord of the Rings themed blends to these now Fantasy South themed blends. Now the mixtures themselves are unaltered, just a name change, more on that in the video, which I'm really excited to, to put together. But, but for now, these two are just stellar. But one more aromatic from the Squire that I do adore is called BB1970, which stands for Birthday Bash 1970, the year the tobacconist was founded. It's not even listed on their site right now, but I have it maybe on good-ish authority, call it decent authority, that it will be back for their next anniversary. It's so good, it's like cake mixed with tobacco. And I know some of you are thinking that's horrible, but it's not. It's great, it's yummy, it's happy, it's confectionery, it's wonderful. Don't be a Scrooge, celebrate the birthday. It's good stuff. Now I want to do my best to stay away from talking about my favorite blends that aren't in production, like BB1970, but it will come back ish maybe hopefully probably definitely i think but this next one is also out of production but i hope it comes back and it's coming from sutliff tobacco maple shadows changed my world i used to be the biggest consumer of autumn evening from cornell and deal way way back and truthfully i'm just not anymore autumn evening is and will for what i think ever be the most top selling aromatic or among the top for, for the rest of the time but but my palate has developed and I've started to shy away from its gooey stickiness. So when Maple Shadows dropped in 2023 for the Halloween season, many consumers actually pointed their fingers and, and shamed it for being the wish.com autumn evening, which albeit is hilarious, good on them for the comedy. But but when I, when I really broke into this tobacco, it, it changed me. And that couldn't have been further from the truth, the wish.com autumn evening thing. This might be my favorite aromatic at the present moment. I smoke it almost daily, if not every other day. It's sweet, but not overpowering. It smokes cool and dry and produces such an alluring aroma. The maple is absolutely present, but nothing like that of autumn evening. To me, this, this is the perfect aromatic mixture. I, I prefer lighter aromatics and, and this checks the box. Unfortunately, it's not in production, as I mentioned, but I'm really hoping to see it return in its jaw-dropping 8-ounce can this Halloween season. I mean, look at this thing. If this is not my favorite aromatic tobacco, it is without a doubt my favorite tin art on any tin ever. Think you have a better one? Because you can't. Comment it down below if you think you have a better tin art than this one. This one's definitely on the Mount Rushmore of, of phenomenal tin arts. I love it so, so much. <laughs> and the tobacco is delicious. But my last favorite aromatic that is in fact in regular production is from, yep, LJ Peretti. This one is called Dutch Chocolate. It's a very subtle aromatic blend that has whispers of chocolate within. This one could be either an everyday smoke or just a little treat on the side. You certainly get the natural tobacco flavors that you would expect from the master blenders over there in Boston, but it does have a subtle sweetness to it. I would not necessarily recommend this to someone who absolutely loves chocolate or at least someone who is looking for like an aromatic chocolate bomb. This one's beauty is in its subtlety. But with that, I think it's high time that we get on to my favorites. We're talking about the best variant of tobacco, the king of tobacco, and that is the earthy and hearty varietal that is Burley. Ah, good old American Burley. 
be it white or dark burley, burley has long been the quintessential blending component in American pipe tobacco. Slow burning, cool smoking, and blends well with pretty much anything, giving blends not a complexity per se, but, but a voice, a spirit. I absolutely love it, and I'm excited to share some of my favorites with you. No surprise here, the best blenders of Burley in the nation, LJ Peretti. A few of my favorites include Blend 102, Blend 52, Blend W, Blend B-94, and if I remember the name correctly, it's called No Name. No Name is actually technically an aromatic, but it's a Burley-based aromatic, and it's definitely a good one that I have to add back into my rotation. And actually, another one I'm looking to add to my rotation is Irish Mist by LJ Peretti. Now, I received a one ounce bag as a gift from a friend who visits Peretti probably once a year or so. His uncle used to work at LJ Peretti way, way back, talking the 70s or 80s, and he wanted to give me a little gift. Because he knows I'm the pipe guy, he knows I'm the, the Peretti guy. So he goes to Todd Brugman, artisan, pipe maker, and employee at LJ Peretti, and he says, what would Adam like? What would Adam get piped like? What's a blend that he hasn't had before? But Todd says, well, you actually just missed him. He was here just a couple of days ago, but one blend that he didn't get was this one, Irish Mist. I'm sure he'll enjoy it. Fast forward, I end up crushing this one ounce bag. This is all that's left from that one ounce bag. And this is over the past few weeks, if that. This one is, is quite spectacular. I think my favorite all-time Burley, from Peretti anyway, is Cuban Mix. This blend is truly amazing. I can smoke this tobacco all day and it was originally blended by Mr. LJ Peretti himself some 153 years ago. In fact, this is Peretti's oldest blend. Very, very special stuff. And while it is so special, I am not sure if it is my favorite tobacco of all time or not. It could be, but maybe not. The reason for that is there exists a tobacconist that has been blending for more than 153 years, specifically 198 as of this year. And, and while that's not the reason for my love of this next particular tobacco, it certainly adds an overall appreciation. Okay, technically it was 1887 when Mac Barron took over, but they bought a tobacco plant that had been there in that hometown since 1826, so I feel like it kind of starts there. Regardless, I am infatuated with this Burley blend from the HH line of tobacco. I really want to talk the history of this company and how this line was designed to bring back tobacco blending in, in the classical sense of, of no casings, no toppings, no additives or anything in that nature in honor of the original founder of Mac Baron, that's Harold Halberg. But I gotta get through this episode, so do you, so we're gonna continue on. There are a number of excellent blends from the HH line and really Mac Baron as a whole, but nothing compares, in my opinion, to the Burley Flake. Maybe Cuban mixture from Peretti, but I'm still leaning on the Mac here. I absolutely adore, I love this square tin that it comes in, particularly the 1.75 ounce tin. I love the gold foil wrap, I love the flake cut, and I love every single thing about this tobacco product. This blend really was a love at first smoke for me. I don't even know how this came into my hands, as it doesn't have the prettiest label nor the prettiest name, but I was fascinated. When I first cracked it, smelt it, and smoked it, I was engrossed and this was truly my very first favorite tobacco and it really hasn't changed over the past three years or so not after the hundreds of blends that i've had since today i even have two collectible tins of the 3.5 ounce versions with signatures from mac baron master blender harry jensen yeah i have a lot of it i have no clue what happens when it ages i'm sure it's just delightful but this is by far in every single damn day, pipe tobacco for get piped. This is definitely my desert island pipe tobacco blend. So with that, that kind of rounds it up with my, my tobaccos. I, I don't really have much to say about straight Virginias. They, they can be tasty, but I rarely go for them, especially when I have all these excellent blends already within my rotation. So for the too long, don't read. My top genre is Burley. My top three tobaccos are one, Mac Baron HH Burley Flake, Number two would be LJ Peretti Cuban Mixture, and number three would probably be Bob's Chocolate Flake by Gay Within Hogarth. What? 
I didn't talk about that. Did I forget? No, I really didn't know where it fit. So this one is one of those I'll die on this hill moments. Technically speaking, okay, technicalities here. It's among the aromatic family. But just like Mac Baron technically began in 1887, but I'm still saying 1826 because of the factory's roots, I'm going against the grain here and calling this a non-aromatic. Hear me out. This blend is one that you smoke and immediately taste the high quality, natural tasting, earthy and rootiness of tobacco. There are absolutely wisps of vanilla and cocoa from the added flavoring, but the bulk of this smoke is, is fine, high quality, natural pipe tobacco flavor. Talking beautiful Virginias from Zimbabwe and Brazil, a wee of Latakia and a wee wee of Burley. And that's what you taste. You taste that because of Europe's strict purity laws, ones that prevent EU tobacco companies from heavily casing and flavoring their tobacco in an attempt to prevent them from covering up or, or masking low quality leaf. Now, whether you agree with that government oversight or not, it does yield a wonderfully natural pipe tobacco flavor. And Gay within Hogarth is a legendary figure in the pipe tobacco blending sphere, using the same techniques that were used back in 1972. Bob's is just exquisite. I, I taste Burley so much when I smoke it, even though it's like what accounts for 2% of the, the blend. It just has a delicious, dark, yet sweet, natural flavor of tobacco. And it, it just pairs with coffee, uh, maybe a whiskey, uh, a pint of Guinness. It's a, it's so good. It's so, so good. And honestly, it just feels wrong to say, I love aromatics. And if someone were to say, okay, what's your favorite? And I were to refer to Bob's chocolate flake as my favorite. That it just doesn't work with me, right? It just, it doesn't make a lot of sense. If I were to say cold blood red moon, that would make sense. But Bob's, I don't know. That's a good quality, natural tobacco. But with that, I will conclude my list of tobaccos. Psych! My first tobacco blend, 100 Earth and Dreams, blended by Quinn Crawford of the Country Squire. 100 Earth and Dreams is a never-to-return Virginia Burley made of McClelland Red 5100 tobacco, a combination of Quinn's variation of his own Red 5100 and Burley. Yes, my beloved Burley with a very special out-of-production tobacco. This blend was spectacular. This blend was a massive success, and I want to thank you guys if you were able to get one. We sold 100 units in less than 10 days. It was just an awesome collaboration between me and the famous Country Squire tobacconist to celebrate that 100 episodes of the Get Pipe podcast. This last bag will never be open to be saved as a monumental relic of Get Pipe history. Now, if you missed out, well, maybe our giveaway and the feeling of FOMO, that's fear of missing out, will have you coming back as a routine listener. But my friends, that will actually, actually complete my list of current tobacco, some of my favorites. These are all my go-tos and I'm excited to discover more over the course of my life as a pipe smoker in this amazing pipe community, this international group of pipe collaborators. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave your thoughts below. What are your favorite of each category? Head on over to Instagram to follow the much, much, much shorter form content at get underscore piped. I'll end with a big thank you to Mitchell once again from MBSD Pipes. Be sure to check out MBSD Pipes for a myriad of meerschaums just like this one here, as well as some artisans, some factory pipes, estate pipes, and some other awesome accessories, including the hard to find ones like this Nimrod lighter that I had been using throughout the video to light my pipes. I was able to snag this rare pipe lighter the moment he posted it because I'm following him on his Instagram. Be sure to do the same and maybe you'll beat the lot when he posts another. Thank you all so much for watching, for caring and for enjoying, but that's it for me because you have all just been pipes and until the next piping, I'm out. This took forever. This took forever to record. And now my coffee's not hot, so I don't have to worry about my tongue getting worse. I put salt in my coffee, and it's, fa it's fantastic. Just a little bit. Just a wee, a wee dram of uh, salt. That doesn't make sense. I used wee a lot in this. This uh, little recording session, didn't I? A wee of salt, a wee of burly. Oh, this is going to take a while to edit.
Thank you, guys. Uh, thankfully, I have another lens and that this camera's not broken. I just dropped the, is this going to focus? Maybe. Am I even, is this a manual focus lens? I don't know. Is it? No. Maybe it is? Okay, no, it focuses auto -ly. I just dropped the hell out of my camera and it's, my lens snapped. This is a good lens. This thing costs like buku dollars. And now we're just left with metal pieces. So the things we do for the pipe, I'm having fun smoking this thing, but damn that's that's killer i don't i don't know what to do good thing i have this lens but like i don't know i can't do close-ups now let's look at this thing this thing won't even focus on me damn this cat's blind hi kitty hi kitty hi kitty it's okay kitty his name's dublin hi kitty we will live. We will live.